want the name, or you can call it a hurdy thing. Does it work for everybody? Working? Working? Is it working over here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're lying. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, uh, so we've got a scat down. We've got an offside go behind. We've got a head side go behind. Whenever we had a, a failed snap down, we should run that into a head drag position. From the head drag, we hooked up a hook chancery. There's a few other chanceries we could run from there. The rest is overloaded with uh, some other stuff. I want to keep it that one. It should be fairly high percentage for you. Let's turn this into uh, a little dust bedding series to get behind this. So let's say I'm back with my partner, Dan. I tried my uh, staff down, and he's not giving me enough of a, a, a level change for me to get my chest on top. We know we probably want to get him in the middle of the ground the mat, right? And we know that we use the head drag whenever we get him at least under starting level so we can throw our chest on. If we're pulling on this guy and we're getting no downward pressure on it, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to use here, at least for the moment. I've got my invisible dance. The duck under we're going to use is, remember, my right hand's on Dan's collar. It's on the back of his neck. My left hand is doing the elbow control. Remember, the inside elbow control is trying to watch out for strikes. The left hand side, I'm going to step forward with my left foot. Step forward with the left foot, and I bang down onto the right knee. I do not lean forward whatsoever. I need to keep my hips, my, my spine over my hips, my hips over this down knee. It's only one nice plane of motion here. If I'm leaning forward a little, I'll show you in a few moments why this is going to be super bad stay in this position. As I've gone down, this hand is going to raise up as if I'm running my fingers through my hair. And then I'm going to continue to pull on Dan's neck and I will push with this foot and we'll stay back up and I'll move around the hand now out of the invisible reign of territory. So we're here. I get to this position here. The reason I got to be all the way upright is I'm leaning forward and Dan sprawls. There's the snap now. Back up. If I'm upright, Dan sprawls. Fine. Everything's in line. I'm, I'm lying through the field. That makes sense? Now to get the go behind, for the stand up, just don't lean forward on your knee because you just said I need to be lying straight up, right? Bad mechanics. You get up, this hand pulls on the neck, and I push with these toes, push my hip forward. This also gives the thing is I'm pulling hard with the right, pushing hard with the right toes. It's getting me all the way around to the still behind position so I can hit uh, a seat, uh, seat belt position or a rear body lock. So we're here and here. Stand back up. Push with those toes, pull with his hand, all the way up, and I can start switching up to a body lock. That makes sense. That makes sense. So slowly, I try to snap down, so no go. Here, upright, hips over femur, head up. Pull, and again, stand up. If you lean to stand up, it's normal because you're thinking, I need to stand up at this thigh. Push, push, pull, and rise up. So again, it's just like if you're doing walking lunges with a barbell. If you have to get up and lean this way, you're overloading this leg. It's great for that thigh. But to get up, push through these heel and here, so you can split your lone stand up this way, get more 50-50 weight distribution. That makes sense? Good mechanical leverage, right? So good engineering. So but you also have the, uh, the force of pulling on the head, which will allow you to turn your eyes to get behind the part. Make sense? Good sense, sir. Okay, let's try it. Snap down to that uh, drop duck under. Let's do it. <laughs> 